Thank you for listening to iHeart Communities. I'm Renee Danino, and yes, we've been doing COVID-19 special programming uh, because the impact here in Connecticut has just been unprecedented, which is a word I'm going to ask everyone to stop using in 2021. But before we get to that, I want to welcome one of our favorite repeat guests on our program, albeit through our social distancing hotline. Please welcome from Jefferson Radiology, Dr. Diana James. It's nice to have you here today. Oh, thank you so much for having me, Renee. I really appreciate it. So uh, I know I'm doing all this COVID-19 programming and its impact here in Connecticut. And of course, we want this this virus to just go away. That may not be um, the case. But while we're all dealing with that, there is life to deal with, too, and other things that are still going on. People are still getting sick. People are, you know, still having those, uh, you know, urgent care visits and things like that. So we're going to talk today about breast health and breast imaging, things like that, that you and I oftentimes speak about when you come to the studio, about how important it is to do those exams. How has this changed the way you all are operating right now? It's honestly made everything a lot more difficult. You know, as you know, I mean, it, we've seen a lot more patient and provider and technologist anxiety just around the basic things we used to do. Uh, so we used to see, you know, a fair number of patients have a pretty busy schedule. We didn't have to think uh, when a patient entered the building, do they have a fever? Do Have they traveled recently? Uh, we're currently screening every single patient that comes in every office measuring their temperature, uh, everyone's wearing a mask. So I'm wearing a mask, the patient's wearing a mask, my technologist is wearing a mask. So it's actually, I, I have to say that one of the biggest changes from just a day-to-day workflow, you know, stepping outside all of the issues with the corona pandemic, is just communication. It's really hard to talk to a patient about what's going on when you can't really see their face. <laughs> you know, that, that's honestly been the biggest change for me as a provider. If I've because obviously people have continued to get breast cancers, unfortunately, throughout the pandemic. And I've had to deliver some bad news, either over the phone or in person. And you have this new barrier of this face covering. And I think probably the biggest challenge uh, as somebody that wants to be empathetic to what a patient's going through has been this mask that we all have to wear now. Yeah. So, it, it, you know, I didn't take into consideration something until you just said it right now. You are all wearing masks and you're delivering news that is life changing, life altering. And you can't see the reaction almost. We can see the eyes. So I I can't even imagine being in your position because I know from your being in here, you're very, you know, interactive with your patients. You're very animated. So this must be just a whole level of of personal touch, if you will, that that. Yeah, I, I can't even imagine. I'm not a doctor, so I don't know what it's like to give somebody that kind of news. And then also uh, it must take away some of the way you can comfort them as well. Exactly. And I think just from my own personal experience as a provider, that's been one of the biggest challenges throughout this you know, pandemic. I've continued to work just about a, almost a regular schedule. But the day-to-day things are completely different. And just, again, that interaction between myself and the patient is different. I had an opportunity to do a breast biopsy yesterday at the hospital on a patient that was COVID positive, and it was really difficult because I absolutely couldn't comfort them like I normally would. There isn't as much talking during the procedure. Usually I try to to tell bad jokes when we're doing the biopsy, you know, those sorts of things. And all of that just normal social interaction is almost gone in, in this pandemic situation. So... If people do need to go in for a mammogram, I mean, I know you just touched on that a little bit ago, but tell me how Jefferson Radiology is seeing patients and how you're altering some of that. Absolutely. So we are seeing, uh, we're seeing all those patients. And then if a patient needs a breast procedure, we're absolutely seeing and scheduling those procedures as well. We're planning on maybe not seeing the same number of patients, but absolutely kind of still doing the same high quality imaging that we normally would. We're just going to take everything a little bit slower. So all the patients are going to be screened when they come into our office. Uh, We're going to be all wearing masks together, like we talked about. And it's basically going to be the same. You're just going to not see as many people around the office because we're obviously going to be uh, still trying to follow those social distance guidelines you know, that the CDC recommends. Uh, So we'll probably have patients waiting in their cars. We have 
plans for new uh, communications to patients where we can do virtual check-ins and then tell you when we're ready for you, that kind of thing to kind of minimize uh, patient contact with other patients. Now, I know, obviously, you're Dr. Diana James, you're with Jefferson Radiology, you're saving lives, you're talking to patients. And I know sometimes the back end with administration, maybe you're not up to, uh, on what's going on with insurance and things like this, but has this changed the insurance process or submissions for all of this, or do you not even know? Uh, what I've heard about, you know, thus far is that unfortunately people have obviously lost their jobs, you know, with the COVID pandemic. And so we are making exceptions. So if you're a screening patient and you've lost your job and you're losing your insurance imminently, we will take you. I believe everything else is the same as long as people still have their same insurance. But I know that's a big question mark for some people. Um, we've definitely kept all of our insurance going for our own employees in the company, um, even though we have had a furlough quite a bit of our staff. Uh, they all retain their medical benefits. So you hope that that's true everywhere, but I'm sure it's not. You know. Well, I mean, who who can tell anything anymore? You know, we have these conversations and, you know, some people are afraid to even uh, go to the doctor's office if it's something that could be uh, urgent because they don't want to get infected with COVID-19. And that is completely understandable. Let's bring it back to breast care and breast care health. At what point do you need to take it to the next level? Or is that even an impossible question to ask? No, I mean, I think all patients should still do their regular self checkup exams. You know, so you should do your normal self breast exam. If you see a lump or you think you have any changes at all, you would still call your normal primary uh, care doctor. We are still doing the same evaluation on our end as far as breast imagers. You know, we're able to do our ultrasounds, still check the clinical history. Wow, that's that's so yeah. much information out there and it can be so overwhelming, but I know that you all are here to help and we have all your links live, but if you are interested, you could go to jeffersonradiology.com. You could also call because you guys have a dedicated breast care line, which is 860-291-6569 where people can ask questions, get more information. Um and if you, you know, you do need to get that mammogram, what should they do? How should they go about that? Yeah, so definitely call that that line um, because that will definitely give you, you can actually ask questions on that line, you know, if, you're, if you have any concerns about what it's like in the offices. Yes. We are taking a lot of extra precautions to keep our patients and our staff safe. So I don't, I know there are a lot of patients that are just extremely worried. You know, many of us haven't been out of our homes in, in many, many weeks, um, other than take to the grocery store or something like that. And we are being very careful. Everything is cleaned constantly. Uh, we're, again, we're giving more time between exams. So, you know, you want to call that, you know, number, ask any questions that you might be worried about, and then set up a date. Again, we're, we're hoping to resume screening, mammogram, screening, ultrasounds on May 11th. I feel like the next question I'm going to ask you is going to be hard to answer as, as well, because I don't even know if you, if, if you can, but I'm just going to go for it if you don't mind. Um, mm -hmm. it, what if someone feels a lump or what if something is concerning them and they, and they delay their mammogram and then eventually they get diagnosed with cancer? Will it be, could it be worse? That is a difficult question. And I think the good news is that most of the time, you know, when when we answer the question of like how it will be worse, typically when we're talking about a cancer, it means that your stage changed. So you went from a stage zero to a stage one or a stage one to a stage two. And usually in a two to three, even four month range, it's not enough time for the, the cancer cells to spread that much that you would upgrade to the next stage. Um, there are exceptions in breast cancer, and I think probably the triple negative breast cancer, and there's some very aggressive like inflammatory breast cancers that could potentially spread in that time. But if you're being very, you know, vigilant, doing your regular soft exams, keeping in touch with your normal OBGYN, your uh, regular primary care doctor, I think you're going to be okay. I mean, it's never 100%, unfortunately. Um, but I would encourage people to not Yep, 2020. I know a lot of there's a lot of extra stress in our life with the COVID pandemic. 
And a screening mammogram is sometimes an extremely stressful exam for patients, but I would still try to squeeze it in at some point in 2020. I was just looking at, again at the CDC data and uh, in 2016, which is the most recent year available, Connecticut's number three. So we still remain in the top three in terms of the incidence for breast cancer. And it still is the second most common breast cancer, you know, um, cancer in women. So we, we still want to be vigilant and doing our best, but I wouldn't worry too much that you changed your stage if you're unlucky enough to have a breast cancer that developed, say, in March, and now you're rescheduling your exam in May. I think you're going to be okay. And I do like how you said, don't let 2020 just, you know, don't don't forget about 2020. You still have to take care of yourselves, right? You still have to, you know, maintain a certain level of care, self-care, self-help, um, speaking with your doctors. What if... You know, you know, I think this is going to be one of my weirdest interviews with you because usually I'm always so prepared, as you know, but I feel like all the questions I'm asking you, I'm, I'm giving you like dead ends almost. But you are you are doing amazing, I have to say. So thank you for your honesty. But, you know, what if you don't have a doctor or primary care and you find a lump? What do you do? So you could still definitely call our, our breast care line. And we, uh, you know, we're connected to Hartford Healthcare and the Breast Care Partnership. So if we do have a patient with a new clinical problem, we can connect you through the breast care partnership and find a provider. I actually had two, I had a patient that came in with a new clinical symptom, did not have a primary care provider, and uh, luckily enough, I was able to have received the APRN for the breast surgical service that uh, is above our office in Farmington. And she does have a, a, you know, a serious breast health issue, but she's plugged in and she's going to be fine. Um, so we we definitely have mechanisms to help patients you know navigate the system if if they don't have a, cur- a current doctor. All right, Dr. Diana James, it's always a pleasure to have you on our program. She is the director of breast imaging for Jefferson Radiology, answering your questions about breast care and COVID nineteen. You can visit mycommunityaccess.com for more information.